In this video, we will look at how to use VCF files for SNP analysis in LaserGene Genomics Suite. There are a few basic requirements VCF files must meet to work with LaserGene Genomics Suite. The first column in the file must contain the chromosome number. The second column needs to show the reference position of the SNP. The third column shows the SNP ID or Cosmic ID number. And the fourth and fifth columns show the reference base and the alternate base call, respectively. Seekman Engine will ignore these columns if they are not labeled ref and alt. Additional columns are not required for analysis, but they can be used to store annotation information. To use a VCF file for SNP analysis, we need to load it in during assembly setup in Seekman Engine. VCF files can be used for a variety of templated project types. When you get to the Input Template Files page, Check VCF file, and then click Browse to locate your VCF file. Now, positions within the VCF file I have selected will be given a user ID during assembly. This ID will be visible in Seekman Pro and ArraySTAR. In this case, I am using a human genome template package for the reference sequence, so we will also have access to dbSNP information in our downstream analysis. Once your assembly is complete, open it in Seekman Pro. Here, the project report shows some summary information about the SNPs in the assembly. The found SNP count represents all of the SNPs found in the assembly. The found user SNP value shows the number of SNPs in the VCF file that are also present in the assembly. The missing user SNP values show how many SNPs from the VCF file are not in our assembly. We can look at these SNPs in more detail by opening the SNP report. If we scroll to the right in this report, we can see the user ID that has been assigned to SNPs in the VCF file. This ID corresponds to the numerical order of SNPs within the file. We can click Filter to show only SNPs within the VCF file, or we can filter to show only novel SNPs which are found in our project, but are not listed in the VCF file. If we go to the Missing SNPs tab, we can see SNPs that are included in the VCF file or in dbSNP, but were not found in our project. Here, we can sort the report by depth to help distinguish SNPs that are missing in areas of zero coverage versus SNPs that are missing in areas with coverage. If you want to add any of the found SNPs to the VCF file, simply click in the SNP column until you see a check mark, and then go to SNP, Append Check SNPs to VCF. This will add the SNPs to the VCF file for future assemblies. You can also use VCF files for multi-sample SNP analysis in ArraySTAR. Here I have loaded a control assembly and a tumor assembly into my ArraySTAR project. In the SNP table, you can see we still have the user ID from the VCF file used during assembly. If we sort on this column, we can see all of the VCF file SNPs grouped together, including those which are missing from either assembly, shown in gray text. If we hover over this SNP, we can see that it matches the reference sequence in the control assembly, but leads to a non-synonymous amino acid change in the tumor assembly. ArraySTAR also allows us to import VCF files with annotation information. To do this, go to File, Import Annotations, then locate your VCF file or files. For example, here I will load some VCF files from the University of Washington Exome Variant Server. To view annotations from the new VCF files, click the ABC icon in the toolbar to add annotation columns then navigate to the information you want. For example, we can add the clinical association column to see OMIM information, and the polyphen column to see a prediction of SNP effects on gene function. We can then use these annotation columns for SNP filtering. If you have any questions about our software, please visit our website, dnastar.com or contact us at support at dnastar.com.